topic of my conversation with you today is about setbacks. And what do I mean by setback? A setback is any grave personal loss that you may have experienced either psychologically, familiarly with your health, may even be with your business or your career. And the reason this is important is because we are absolutely guaranteed as human beings to suffer setbacks. Uh, we will experience suffering at some point in our lives. And my focus has been my stage four cancer journey and trying to use that setback, not just to bounce back, which is to get to health, but to bounce forward. What I mean by bouncing forward is to take advantage of your pain rather than just relieve it. In many ways, psychologists would call this post-traumatic growth rather than post-traumatic stress. It is finding some redemption in your pain, some way of moving yourself forward, some way of disrupting your own way of thinking into a new way of thinking rather than just revert back to where you were. And what I did was I created a new architecture in my brain. And that new architecture consists of five rooms. And those are five rooms that I enter into different parts of the day, different times of the day. But there isn't a day now that I don't go into these five rooms. Each of these rooms means something to me. And each of these rooms mobilize a different part of myself and my existence and my part of my being. Let me take you through these five rooms. The first room that I sometimes reside in is what I call my death room. In my death room, when I'm sitting in that death room, I hear the voice of my oncologist, which at one point tells me after my chemotherapy and all my treatment that I have a 20% chance of surviving for five years. And in that death room, I am very aware of my mortality. I'm aware that I may not live for the next two or three years. But that death room does not bring me sadness. Paradoxically, it provides me with so much energy and the oxygen to use my life, to obtain as much flavor as I can. When you know and you are focused on your mortality, then small things will not disrupt you. Then you will be a lot less hassled by the small things and the small conversations of life, whether it's the traffic or some service provider who has not given you a nine out of 10. For me, the death room is filled with big conversation, big experience, love, desire, passion. It is about the moment. In the death room, I do not plan. I do not engage in the future. I am just thriving on every single second. The downside of the death room is that if you keep on thinking you're going to die, at some point you may get a little depressed. And so if I stay too long in the death room, I know that I will get depressed or too sad. So I have to skip across the corridor into my life room. And my life room is the room that I have felt most comfortable with in my life, literally, it is the room which says I will live forever. It is the room which says I will get to my 80s and 90s. It is the room which says I'm omnipotent and I can be in control. Of course, without the life room, you can't plan big things. You see, in the death room, it is in the moment. But without the life room, there can't be big vision. And the life room gives me big vision. It allows me to be bold. It allows me to think in different ways about my business or what I want to do in 10 or 15 years time and plan for that. The problem with the life room is if you think you're going to live forever, you do get hassled by small things. You do get hassled by the traffic and flights not being on time or service providers. So if I spend too much time in the life room, my life actually gets a little smaller sometimes, paradoxically. And I either jump into the corridor and go back to the death room where I appreciate every moment, or I find another room. And for me, that other room that I sometimes go into, which I enjoy, is my science room. Science is about exploration. Science is not about the truth. Science is about looking for the truth 
but through a series of iterations. Always looking to improve, discover, question. I found for myself over the last 10 or 15 years in business that I've become pretty fixed in the way I see things. And that is not a place I want to be anymore. It is a place that I want to transform. And I want to be much more open to possibilities. I want to be much more open to judging less. I want to explore thoughts that I hadn't explored before. Ideas that I've sometimes discounted. And in the science room, I'm filled with intellectual and emotional exploration of different dimensions of myself that I haven't even thought of and what they could be. I'm open to possibility all day. The problem is, if you stay in the science room for too long and you're open to possibility all day, you may not achieve anything. At some point, you have to engage in action. And so, there are times when I have to leave the science room. And let me take you into my fourth room that I occupy frequently every single day. And that is my dependency room. And in my dependency room, I'm not intellectually aware that I am dependent on people. I am emotionally and intellectually immersed in the fact that I cannot exist as a human being without other people. I cannot exist without my family. I cannot eat without farmers and people who transport that food to me. I couldn't have existed without the nurses who cleaned up after me on my sheets after I vomited or could not control my bowels. I cannot exist without love and kindness. And in my dependency room, I am so, so appreciative of every single person who gives me life and who gives me something. That has transformed even the way I approach business and the way I even approach my own staff in my business. Finally, let me take you into my fifth room, which occupies, again, a substantive part of every single day. Because every one of these rooms is a room that I visit every day. And my fifth room is my resilience room. And I define resilience, as many others do, as thriving, as bouncing forward, not bouncing back. Endurance is about bouncing back. You know, animals, for example, have done a great job from a Darwinian perspective, some animals, cows, pigs, of survival. They've actually survived. They've done a great job. But I don't want to survive. Resilience is not about survival. Resilience is about thriving. Cows and pigs have done a lot better than other species. They have won in the battle, in the war of survival. But their lives are miserable. And I would be saying in my resilience room, pain needs to take me forward. Pain needs to be good. The world needs to be different to me in a way that it's never been. Cancer has been overwhelmingly healing. And only when I say that do I know I've built up resilience. These are my five rooms. I now don't judge balance of life in days or months or years. I judge balance of life in milliseconds. And I use my five rooms to balance my life sometimes within a second. Because sometimes I'm in the wrong room and I need to find another. When I have a fixed view, I need to go into my science room. When I'm starting small conversations in my life room, I need to go to my death room. When I get too depressed in my death room and I stay there for too long, I need to go to my life room. When I feel unappreciative and am pessimistic, I need to go to my dependency room or my resilience room where I see the upside. These are my five rooms. They have been overwhelmingly useful to me. I hope that they can be of some use to you.